Hi, I am Jerome from Fastlane. Welcome to this video on the Cisco Unify wireless networking solution. This series is about wireless QoS. This video is the second of a series of four. In the first video, we checked WMM, 8.11e, AIFS, TXOPs, and in the second video, I would like to show you how you configure those items on the controller and how you can see what impact this configuration has on the wireless cell. If you haven't checked the first video, I would suggest that you first check that first video. This one is a continuation from this first video, unless you already know pretty well WMM, LQ11E, TXLP, etc. So here is my, my setup. I have um, one controller set here with an access point set on channel number one, and I have Wireshark ready here to sniff channel number one. And what I'm going to do is to set my SSID, which is voice, as you can see here, to various QoS settings and show you in the wireless space what we see when we change those configurations. So the first item I'm setting it up to is to set the WMM policy to disable. That's not the default, by the way. The default is in allowed here. But I'm setting it to disable so that you can see what you do not see. Um, and then from Wireshark, I just need to sniff uh, the traffic um, and see what impact this configuration has on the beacons. Okay, just a couple of uh, frames should be enough. And I see here voice. Okay, so if I, this is a beacon, right? So it's uh, something which is sent every 100 milliseconds by default, where the access point stipulates its specifications. So among those items, if I dig here in the uh, fixed and tag parameters, this is where you'll see most of the information we are looking for. And if you look down here, uh, you'll see that there is nothing special about WMM or QoS whatsoever. You have some vendor-specific information, but you have nothing about uh, 811E or WMM. And the reason why is because WMM being set to off, disabled in my uh, SSID, there is no mention of WMM on this SSID beacon. And as you know, WMM is an extension to the 802.11 protocol, which means that it's backward compatible with non-WMM stations. That means that actually the WMM or QoS information in the frames is going to be an additional header at the end of the normal header. So if you do not support WMM, there is just nothing about WMM. There is not even a mention saying, I do not do WMM because non-WMM stations would not understand such a message. So there is just nothing about WMM. Okay, fair enough. So let me go back to my controller and set WMM here to allowed. And you'll see it's going to change a lot of things. Set it to allowed. Go back to my capture and start a new capture. And as soon as I do that, if I go to any of the beacons here, in the same type of field, you should see that at the end, there is actually something different. Here we go. You see, suddenly we have that information, which is WME. WME being the um, ancestor, I would say, of WMM, but you'll see a lot of fields still keeping that name WME instead of WMM. And you see that suddenly we have admission control, we have four queues, the four queues we're mentioning in the first video. And not only do we have four queues, but we also have the AIFS value. So it says AIFS number here, but it's the AIFS value. So you see for each and every single queue, the access point is dictating what is the default AIFS. And that's based on the DIFS value. So uh, this AIFS being two uh, is actually being two DIFSs, if I may say. And then you'll see also the EC low mean and max, which is the number of slots that you can wait before sending this traffic out. So you see, suddenly we have those parameters. What is interesting is that it's an additional information. It's even called vendor specific, which means that if your client is not WMM enabled, because uh, it doesn't understand WMM, it would not be able to interpret those values. But as it's vendor specific, it's an option. It's not mandatory. So your non-WMM client will still be able to associate and use a normal DIFS process to talk to the access point. Well, the WMM client will be able to read that and know which AIFS they need to use for each of the queues and also how long they need to wait. Here, the value zero means that the um, vendor can decide of um, those values, min and max here. So the access point is not dictating a specific value for uh, those minimum slots and maximum slots. Remember, those are the values you wait before uh, sending the frame. You count down from a value which has to be picked up between min and max. And when you set those values to zero, you just say, well, whatever your driver says, pick up the value in that window. I do not force you to use a specific window.
Another element that the exponent is going to give your client is the uh, QBSS load information, which should be a little bit up here. Yeah, here we go, QBSS load element. So what this does here is that it tells the client, the WMM client, about the load of the access point on this SSID. So here it tells you there is one station already and my channel is used at 26%. This allows the WMM client to pick up signals from different access points, read the QBSS load element for each of these access points, and if they serve the same SSID, the client will have the possibility to choose which access point has the least load, therefore which access point has the more space for this client to associate to the best access point. Okay, so that is if we set the WMM value to allowed. What if we set to required? Well, you see, the only difference between the uh, mandatory and optional or allowed way is that the mandatory says if you are not WMM I will not let you associate to my SSID. So from the pure um, beacon standpoint the access point is still going to forward the same information out. So you see we have the same parameters here and we still have the same QBSS value up. The only difference is from the association standpoint where if you are not WMM your access point is just not going to let you associate. So there is no real parameter by which you'll see in the uh, uh, beacon that the access point only takes WMM clients, but your client has to respect the WMM specification when associating to the access point. And among those specifications, there are negotiation of speed, type of traffic that the client wants to send, etc. So if your client doesn't follow that process, the access point is just refusing the client just because he doesn't support WMM. So that's the main difference. One mention about this um, QoS here, this thing here, doesn't do much about your wireless clients themselves. It does do something, but only when you send to and from the wire, that is to say when you transfer traffic to the controller and back, this feature here will have a, an impact on what kind of tagging you may have on your frames. But it doesn't affect the way the access point talks to the wireless clients inside the wireless cell uh, before or after you know, sending and receiving to and from the, the controller. Um, we'll, we'll check those, these features a little bit later, but one feature I would like to show you is on, on the uh, wireless section. Um, if you go to EDCA parameters, this is where you decide how you're going to inform your clients about the IFS, etc. If you go back to my capture here and if we go back at the bottom, you see we have uh, those four queues and we say that admission control is not mandatory. We have the AIFS values and the uh, WMIN and WMAXs. Transmit opportunities here, that is to say how many frames you have the right to send of that category within each period decided by the access point, etc. So these are the default for WMM, so there is no maximum, although you'll see in the 811E protocol that when you say TX of P0, you actually mean one frame of each type, but in the controller it's a little bit different. Um, so there is no, no specific regulation here, but you could think, you know, if I'm doing a voice network, um, should I want to set those values to something a bit more specific so that it matches my voice requirements? And the answer is maybe yes, and that's something you'll do here. So if you go to EDCA parameters, for example, and you say I want to use voice optimized, and you click apply. It's not going to change the way the access point sends the beacons, but it's going to change the content of the specific section. Oh, by the way, you need to disable your network if you want to change this parameter. Once this is done, and even if I do not change anything on my SSID QoS section, you remember I was setting the uh, WMM value to required, it could be set to allow the same way. If I now capture a new packet, and if I look at my beacon, and if I go down to my uh, WME information, you'll see that suddenly the values are not the same as the ones we had before. So you may want to rewind back this video if you want to double check. But you see, suddenly you have AIFS which are different and have uh, TXLP are the same, but the uh, uh, slot, minimum and maximum slot are now different. And you see that for voice, I'm saying your minimum slot time, the number you'll pick up before counting down will be between two and two. So it's gonna be two, right? If it's video, uh, between three and three. If it's uh, background and best for etc., you have you, you pick uh, larger values. So you see, suddenly you're dictating how much you should wait when counting down for each type of packets, and you're also deciding of the IFS, which means that even when you get down to zero, how much longer should you wait before sending your packet? So you see that suddenly you're prioritizing voice a lot 